I'm Toby Vanden Heuvel. I uh, served as the moderator this past year, and I would like to uh, call this 172nd annual meeting of FCC Oshkosh uh, to order. I think that's amazing uh, when I think about it, 172 years. Um, people of this, this city have been gathering together to um, just follow the steps of Jesus in, in many different ways. And uh, we're still together, we're back, we're here in person, we are live streaming this, this meeting, so uh, I just think that's a wonderful thing. So I'm just happy to kind of be here and, and see everyone and I imagine you are as well. So thank you for that. So um, as I mentioned, we are streaming this online, folks online. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you'll be able to participate. Um, you will not be able to, to vote, but if you do have questions, uh, please type the questions in through uh, Facebook and Jen Norton will be uh, looking for any questions from you online. So a couple of points of order. Um, we do have a parliamentarian for this meeting, uh, Kathy Willey, so thank you. Uh, and a couple things. We will be following, this is interesting too, um, we will be following Robert's Rules of Order. I was told that that was uh, invented for church meetings, which makes a lot of sense. Um, they're needed, I'll tell you that much. Um, and the, the thing is about a, a congregational church is the, um, you know, we are, we are the members, we are the investors, we are the customers, we're the providers, we are everything. This is our church. It's, it's, uh, so this meeting is important to talk a little bit about what we've done the last year, but really what we ought to do going forward. So um, for each of the, the items that we, we talk about, we will, if it's a voting issue, we will ask for a, uh, someone to motion, uh, make a motion and for someone to second it. Again, that's just how, how things are done. And we would ask you to state your name if you do that. So just so Vanessa, our clerk, will she be capturing the minutes. So again, and then there'll be time for discussion. So if there is any discussion, uh, again, we wanna keep the, the meeting moving um, to give you the information, but at the same time, this is our this is our opportunity to to talk about items. If you have uh, questions, concerns, thoughts, ideas, so please do. We'll uh, we'll ask for that. That being said, I need a volunteer to uh, be the roaming microphone. Anybody want to? CB. Okay, we'll get that ready for you. And just I'm sorry. Can I? Should I just talk? There, thank you. All right. Uh, before I begin, I do want to just uh, call out and, and thank the, the other members of the, the church council because it was a uh, it was quite a year. We had a lot of great discussions, and so uh, Cynthia Thorpe, Mike Duffy, Vanessa Frank. Sarah Jakob, Kathy Willey, Paula Allen, Dave Ramon, Jeff Palmenbecker, Sue Cago. Thank you for all your help and support this year, and uh, several of you will be up here speaking about uh, initiatives, um, so thank you again. And again, reach out to those folks afterwards if you have any, any questions. All right, to begin, let's make sure we can have this meeting. Do we have a quorum, Vanessa? We have a quorum, so very good. Let's, uh, all the kind of logistics are done, let's start with an opening prayer, Nancy. Let us pray. Gracious and glorious God, we are because you are. We are here because you gather us together. Gather us together for healing, for blessing, for challenge, for call to be your people, here with one another, here in this community of Oshkosh, and here in this your world. We give thanks for all the things that have gone before, not only this last year, but in the last 172 years. Help us see you. Help us 
acknowledge all the ways you have brought peace and healing and love into the world through this church. May we indeed be your people. May what we do, who we are, and what we dream of radiate with your love, your grace, and your peace. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, the next item, and again, for those online, um, we do have the annual report, report, and that's been published, and that is on the FCC website. So if you are want to follow along on the uh, using the annual report, go ahead and click that link on the FCC website. So we start off with the uh, approval of the uh, minutes from last year. Um, Vanessa submitted those minutes from last year. Um, I would welcome a motion to approve those minutes. Cynthia Thorpe, motion. Jeff Almanbeck. Any discussion on last year's minutes? Okay then, all in favor? Any opposed? Got the speak, got the roaming mic, okay. CB said she would do it if you want. All right, moving on then. Vanessa, do you want to give us an update on the uh, church membership? Thank you. All right. Um, in the past year, we have had both challenges and blessings. In November, we worked to uh, ensure that our membership role reflected an accurate picture of our church. So letters were sent to members that had not been active in two years, um, asking if they wish to remain on our membership roles or if they wish to be um, removed from the roles. As a result, 11 members were removed from our membership roles at their request. 25 um, members were also removed due to having no contact information. Um, we made efforts to get in, in touch with them, but were not able to. Uh, so regretfully, they were also removed. Uh, the year ended with uh, 346 members and 115 friends of FCC. We had many occasions to celebrate during the year. Uh, through baptism, we welcomed Danae Davis Frundle, Cole Joseph Moore, Levi Jeffrey Tolipson, Wyatt James West, Graceland Rose West, and Theodosia Jean Elmer Knudsen. We also confirmed seven young adults. Congratulations to Talon Boos, Daya Larson Peschel, Ava Mirror, Charlotte Stelflug, and Andrew Wiedemann. We welcome seven new members. So a warm welcome to Kim Eschenbach, Janice Evers, Bonnie Yedis, Mike Yedis, Kim Lynch, Jeffrey Reichenberger and Julie Reichenberger. And we said goodbye to two of our beloved members. We said goodbye to Tom Arndt and Ken Inch. Um, I'm looking forward to serving in 2023, and I'm looking forward to the many blessings that will bring all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Nancy, did you have anything to add? that those new members who are here, if you'd stand up. I mean, you've been around for a while, but Kim, Bonnie, Mike, Kim, two Kims. We continue to, to delight that you have hitched your wagon to this amazing congregation. Kim. And we didn't keep... We left her off. She certainly did. Our apologies to your mom, Sally. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, thank you. Let's uh, shift a little bit to the financial portion of uh, our meeting. Uh, Cynthia, if you could please come up and talk about uh, generation. Whatever you're most comfortable with, yeah. We'll see. I want to look at this group. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, as you see, the report up there is a generosity report. So if you're following along at home or if you're following along up here, you know what the words that may echo. So I want to just speak a little bit to generosity. We've emphasized it so much this year. This past year, under Art and Kathy's leadership and guidance and the support of the entire church council, we reflected many kinds of and different expressions of generosity through our own personal experiences, worship, discussions, and gatherings. I want to thank all of you who shared their experience, and I want to thank those of you who listened. Here at FCC, we describe generosity as a sharing of time, treasure, and talent. I identify with that list. I love that list, particularly the alliteration. However, yesterday, I really couldn't help myself, so I Googled generosity. And I got kind of carried away, got engrossed with the words from scholars, philosophers, and religious leaders regarding their many definitions and perspectives on generosity. So reviewing those works, I learned you can make lists. I'm a list maker. Got some list makers out of there. There were philosophers that would say that these are the two piece components of generosity. These are the three, four. We got a high as seven. I'm not going to bore you with all those lists, but it was very interesting to get the various perspectives. And I want to share you a few takeaways that I had from that. The first thing is I love to define words. And generosity, of course, comes from Latin, so often things do. And it means noble or magnanimous. And simply defined is the quality or fact of being plentiful and large. I love this one, pure generosity, which is giving to others not simply the abundance, but giving what enhances their well-being. Another favorite was, one scholar said, said, attention, attention, never thought of it that way, is the rarest and the purest form of generosity. I thought I'd have to work on that one. And of course, there's a biblical favorite from Corinthians. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Friends and members, as you read this annual report, we have met our generosity goals. You will see we've increased the number of pledges and we've increased the finances that we will reap from those pledges. So you have shared not only your treasures, but I want to remind you that every time you usher, you greet another, sing in the choir, make a meal, clean up after that meal, serve on a committee, hold a hand, dry a tear, present in this church this morning, this narthex, teach our children, supported our community outreach. You are being generous. You have been generous. So thank you for being a people of generosity. Thank you for being plentiful and large. Thanks for everyone for living your generosity. Thank you. Okay, and now Mike Duffy, our treasurer, will come up and uh, give us a, a review of our financials. Put the next slide up first, the investment slide up first. I thought I'd start with this. I'm not going to give a talk about the stock market. That's not quite as inspirational as. Uh, oh, let's, wait, I'll do this one. Sorry. Uh, I won't talk. I w I'll start with the bad news because everybody knows the stock market and the bond markets were terrible. 
in uh, 2022. So if you look at our investments, it's kind of scary because uh, you know we're down over $400,000 in how much money we have. Um, so the only thing is we had a hope that the future will be better you know, than the, than the past. And, and it should, you know, if you talk to the investment people, they say that given time, the stock market will, will do well. Only one of our funds, the, um, uh, N the NST fund is actually just basically a cash fund because we figured we'd have to spend that. So that's not invested. But even that, you can see it, it didn't make any money either. So if we'd have just put all our money into cash and hoped that it was going to stay the same, we wouldn't be making money for the future. Because when you get to the budget, you'll see what we've tried to do with the budget for the Finance Committee and Church Council is we've tried to budget about 4% of our expenses being paid for out of our investments. And that's hard to do when you lose 20% of your money. So it does affect our budget moving forward. So our money's invested fairly conservatively. It's a moderate risk uh, fund that over the course of last year lost, I think, 16 to 20%. So you know, we're, it doesn't look good right now, and we can just hope that over the next year that we make that up. And we have. If you look back over five years, it has made at least 4% annual return. So um, the permanent opportunity funds here, those are the, the money that we broke up last year from Nancy Norgard's generous uh, uh, account. And those four funds, uh, two of them we're starting to spend already. So you can see that the two, the um, Operating fund and facilities fund are a little bit smaller because we did take money out of those accounts to pay for operations and, and facility maintenance. The other two funds we'll be talking about later today about uh, that's the, that they're uh, subject to the grant proposal. So these four funds started at the same amount, and over time they're going to be different amounts. Um, the other fund that's up there, the um, endowment fund, is a fund that was started to encourage people to donate to a church endowment but really hasn't gone anywhere. And church council may be talking about rolling that into the permanent opportunity funds just to simplify things in the future. So this is the basic where we stand uh, with our investments today. Or this was as of December 31st. There's some more details in the annual report. You want to go back to the other slide then? Um, so here's the budget information. Actually, why don't you give me that mic? So um, if you look at we did reasonably well in 2022. Uh, we budgeted significant losses last year. Of this, so the bottom line of the deficit of 24,000 is less than what we had budgeted. We thought it could even be worse. So I'm hoping we're uh, wrong again this year, <laughs> that because we're budgeting a deficit of $61,000 for this year. And again, the decision was made to keep the church mission, the personnel, to keep doing everything that we could to maintain the the work of this congregation and church. Um, but unfortunately, our, even though we've had a wonderful return, just like Cynthia said, in fact, the, the, um, as, of, as of yesterday, we actually, the final number that I got as of yesterday is better than what was in the budget. We had 95 pledges of $241,000. So, um, so that's actually, you know, gone up since the budget was put together. But, um, the good news last year, too, is we, we had the sabbatical pastor, so expenses were a little high because of that, but we do put money aside for a sabbatical pastor, so we were ready for that. So if you look at our total expenses in 2022, some of that sabbatical pastor expenses won't be needed this year. Uh, but still, I was we did a good job of controlling costs. I, I added up almost $17,000 in cost savings just from things that people did with uh, lower expenses for some of the uh, ministry groups and personnel costs, so uh, expenses were controlled uh, reasonably well. Uh, if you can see, uh, we had $346,000 in expenses last year, and we budgeted for $362,000. So looking at next year, you know, again, our pledge contributions are a little bit higher than what's on when the budget was put together. Still, we're, we're budgeting in 2023 a deficit of, it could be $71,000. Um, now, if you, you look at the, also the 4% line on there, um, because of the stock market and where our money, money is right now, we budgeted less than the 50000 that we budgeted last year. So we only budgeted 39000 because we, have, we started with less money. So we can, we can hope that those accounts grow, but um, again, we have less money to, uh, uh, to take the 4% from. So we got to hope we can control expenses again. We've had a very generous uh, pledges from the congregation, 
but those pledges don't cover all of our expenses. In fact, the pledges basically cover personnel. You know, it's pretty much what it looks like if you look at the budget is we can pay for our staff with our pledges, but we can't pay for our lights and all of our maintenance and so forth. So that's basically the overview of the budget and the financial state does, um, and again, details are in the report. Does anyone have any questions about that? I tried to just keep it real high level and quick. Any questions about the finances? Okay, thanks. All right, now we're at the point of the agenda where we uh, review and approve the pastoral compensation. So Nancy, if you could take a break, we will call you back. <laughs> we'll come and get you in just a bit. And again, if you're, if you're new to FCC or a congregational meeting, uh, each year we're obligated to present our uh, compensation that we recommend for our pastor and it's a congregational vote. So everyone does get to, uh, to vote on that. So. Uh, Pat Blades is the uh, facilitator of the personnel committee, but she is uh, still um, fighting an illness. So Dennis, if you could please uh, present the uh, compensation package. Good morning. I bring you news from the pers personnel committee that we are recommending a 4% uh, cost of living. No, it's, it's, it's less, that's less than the, uh, the uh, National from the from the uh, labor statistics, and, but it's also consistent with our uh, when we look at UCC's schedules for pastors. And uh, as you remember, we also uh, pay for the uh, both halves of the uh, or uh, for the social uh, social security. So the total for compensation for next year, we're recommending. $80,540. All right, uh, before we have any discussion, uh, I look for a motion to approve this recommendation. Karen Bowen and a second. Sally. Any discussion, questions? All right, uh, all in favor? Any opposed? All right, I look for a volunteer for someone to go get Nancy. <laughs> all right. All right, why don't we go ahead and move on to then uh, Jeff Pullenbecker, who presents uh, two items, update on the Permanent Opportunities Fund granting process, as well as the uh, next step together. All right, the Permanent Opportunities Fund um, was created actually at this meeting a year ago, uh, largely with a gift from Nancy Norgard, but also some other investments and gifts that we received from the congregation. There are four parts to the Permanent Opportunity Fund. About a quarter of it helps subsidize the budget. About a quarter is for building and grounds improvements. About a quarter is for mission and initiatives in the congregation, and about a quarter is in the community. So the two last pieces are grants that people would apply for, and a grant committee reviews them and brings them to this congregation for, with a recommendation that you approve them. So um, we received five grants this year. One of them was a dishwasher for the lounge, which should have been included in the Next Step Together campaign, so that was paid for out of different money. So left us with four grants. We're recommending two right now, thinking the other two will come back. They need a little bit more work until we can implement those other two. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, a bubbler on the first floor. The first floor bubbler isn't bad, but if you've gone to the second floor, it gets really bad. It's probably original to the building. So what they're going to do, building grounds and the green team are proposing, they'll take the bubbler from downstairs, which, isn't, which is used heavily, move it upstairs, it's a nice refrigerated one, 
and then downstairs they're going to put one like this with a oh, this picture got very small but it's a, one of those bubblers that has a bob, bottle filler on it and then you can tell how many bottles you saved so the recommendation there is for twenty one hundred dollars to replace the bubbler on the first floor move the bubbler from the first floor to the second floor and then retire the one from upstairs to a museum somewhere <laughs> the second proposal we're recommending right now on the next slide is a, a, a proposal from the social justice uh, ministry group. They're looking to expand the ABC Scarves program, ABC Anti-Bully Campaign Scarves program. They've been doing this for 10 years. I believe this year is the 10th year, is that right, Jody? So we're on 10 years of this, and these are volunteers that make scarves that are given to the schools in fifth grade for children to wear that says two things, one, I care about you, and you're this, I'm a safe person to talk about, but it's also an awareness thing that bullying should not be happening. Those of you that have had fifth graders, you know middle school is a really rough time, and this is an important project they've done for 10 years. They're looking to expand this, and it would go to, it would be offered to the private schools in the community, but also some of those scarves would go to homeless people in the community too. So this is not paying for what we're already doing, but rather expanding it to to do even more. So I don't think there's another slide, is there? Oh yeah, proposed motion. So we'll, it's your moderator. Yeah, so, so again, a little bit of history. We had planned on having a, a separate meeting to present the, uh, the grants. Uh, as it so happened, we're overlapping it with our annual meeting. So uh, we were planning on each year having a congregational approval on the uh, proposed grant, so we're doing that here. So uh, we would look for a motion to approve granting for these two initiatives. Gene first, and then Joyce Frohn second. Any discussion? Yes. Mike. I don't know, I thought the treasurer knew that answer. <laughs> um, the permanent opportunity. There's the, the um, yes, There's, these are both coming out of, the, one's internal, the bubbler, and one's the external fund, yes. Treasurer knew that, that was a trick question. <laughs> the other thing I wrote in the report is, we certainly expect those other two proposals will come back, and when they're done, we will bring them to the congregation with a recommendation and for a vote. numbers person says there's eighty nine hundred dollars available this year and that that's variable basically based on the investment income so this year was about eighty nine hundred dollars any other questions I think it's important to say that the money that's not used this year in those two funds will roll over and be available for funds for next year. Correct. It will. They're available any time. Any funds that are allocated in, in a current year can be, and that are not used, can be used in the future. So we would come back with those other two proposals with 2022 money that we would propose to be used for that. Thank you, Kathy. So again, before I, I, I take vote, not, I'm, not that I'm worried about the vote, I just want to put a plug in for, um, you'll, he, you'll be hearing very soon about, again, this is a yearly thing for people to uh, apply for these grants to do wonderful things, both here in the church and out in the community. So um, watch, watch this space very soon and we'll have communication on how you go about doing that again this coming year. Any other discussion? All in favor of these two grants, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carried. Right. 
I do want to thank uh, Karen Bowen, Sarah Yashup. I guess we pronounce her name different ways in the congregation. Somebody should correct me if I'm wrong. Mike Udis and, my, and Nick Schneider who were the, and myself who were on this committee to put this together. A year ago we approved this, but only a ske kind of a skeleton of what we were supposed to do. We put together forms, process, and worked our way through it, learned a lot, and we're meeting tomorrow night to start it all over again. All right, the second report I got, if I may have the microphone back again. All right. So this is the Next Step Together uh, Fund, and a little history. When we did the campaign, we had, if you remember, we had a low, medium, and high goal on the campaign, and we were just shy of the medium goal. And the church council appointed a task force to look at the dollars that were pledged, but also how can we use those dollars to get as much done as possible that was proposed in the campaign. When uh, we did the campaign, people could make pledges over a five-year period. That works really well for getting nice-sized contributions. It doesn't work so well if you change your job, you have health issues, people die, people move away. So you always expect there'll be some attrition and you won't collect every dollar that was pledged. Um, so when we projected the income on this, we were very conservative on the income side, thinking you always lose some of it, so let's hold back. We don't want to spend money we don't have. So we had a, in your, in your um, packet, unfortunately this one in the packet got a little mucked up, that there's page 28, but in your handout, the separate handout, 28A and 28B are actually the accurate report. And then page 29, Yes, page 29 is a list of all the projects that were done and what was spent on each one of those projects. Page 30 is a summary that I'm going to talk about right now. So you'll see that we, we projected, we, we proposed a list to the congregation of projects that we would do that didn't spend every last dollar that was pledged, but rather saved a little bit to the end and said if we come up and actually get that money, we'll come back with proposals what to do. Amazingly, shockingly, and a blessing to this congregation, I've never, I've, I worked in nonprofits for about 35 years, I have never done a campaign that every dollar that was pledged was actually collected. And we're projecting by the end of this year, not only will we collect every dollar, we're going to have an extra $326. So let's pull that slide, I think two ahead. The slide. One more. Uh, one more. Apparently, there we go. $394 more than what was pledged will be collecting. Some people were unable to fill their pledges, but other people gave and had never pledged. That is a testament to this congregation and the generosity of the people here. So now we can back up to three slides. There we go. There we go. So income is $821,000. $821, we're projecting $15,000 will still come in. I can tell you we have 20% of that already since this report was written, and I can also tell you part of it was because somebody went home and realized he hadn't finished his pledge and took care of that. So we have a projected income of $836,000. So far, we've spent $746,000. We've saved some money for projects that aren't finished yet. For instance, there was a consultant that was engaged for Christian education and then some money there to do some initiatives there. There's some money to go into an endowment. There's money for a couple small social justice funds that are there. So those have been set aside for them to use in the next year or two. So we're looking at expenses will be $794,000 for a balance of $42,000. That's still left in the account, basically. And again, this is the money we had left there as a cushion, not knowing that everybody would pay their uh, pledges. So the next slide shows what we're proposing. So we have $42,000 to work with. When we looked at what else we should do with the dollars were remaining, we, we stayed very close to things that would have been in the campaign or an oversight in the campaign. For instance, if we had known five years ago that we were going entirely online and would be broadcasting the service every Sunday, we would have done things differently. As it was, we had done some technology upgrades so the choir can see what's happening in the sanctuary, but now the world sees what happens in the sanctuary. 
So there's a couple pieces here. The first item is $1,700 to that platform they sit on back there. It's already done. It just would be a money transfer and how we pay for it. The rest of these have not been done. The data and computer network update for $3,000. Again, we never expected we would be broadcasting, and so that's to update the network internally in the building to accommodate. We have new phones, they're internet phones, Wi-Fi in the building, and the broadcasting that we do. And the, fourth, the last item here, this $20,000, we're earmarking that, and then we'll put together a committee that would do something about um, replacing this screen. We bought this screen about 15 years ago and we brought it out every four or six weeks to show a movie clip. Now we do it all the time. So we see that as an opportunity. Again, five years ago, if we had known this, we might have included something to do about monitors in the sanctuary. We didn't know that. So those were things that we didn't know five years ago, but we think are very consistent with what the campaign looked like. Um, one big oversight was $12,000 to the childcare room. If you walk around the ground floor in the basement of this building, everything has been done except for the childcare room. And unfortunately, that was just an oversight. So we're looking at that and saying, we need to make a, a much clearer message about the value of young people in our congregation. And especially when it stands out in the midst of everything else that was done, that room wasn't done. Then the last piece is a stage curtain and a screen for downstairs. Fellowship Hall looks beautiful, but we forgot that we needed to buy curtains down there. And not only do you need to buy curtains, they need to be flame resistant, so the felt blocks that we have up there right now don't really qualify as stage curtains. So we're looking at $3,000 for that. And if you look at that, $39,000, now I think we can go to the next slide. Great. So that we have expenses of 836, current expenses of 794,000 leaves at 42,000. We're proposing 39,000, which leaves $2,000 left in the campaign. Wow, sorry. Sucked all the air out of the room. So I think there's a slide for a recommendation here. I think there's a, excuse me, there's a, we, next slide. Nope, one Whoops. back. There we go, that's it. So I would look for a motion uh, to approve the recommended uh, spending for the remainder of the Next Step Together campaign. Art Willie moved, second. All right, now any discussions, questions? Might be too early, but um, is there like uh, basic plans for the child care room? Like, are, is it like what's going to be done there? And is twelve thousand going to be? Sure, we worked with Gene on this to get the where the dollar figure came from. Replace the countertop, replace the sink in there, refinish the cabinets, paint the walls, new ceiling, new lights, new floor. So basically, what we did in all the other rooms on the first yep. floor. Great, thank you. Any other questions? All right, uh, all in favor of approving this, say aye. aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Thank you, Jeff. Quick thank committee. you to the committee, if I may. Uh, Sarah Dempsey, Sarah Yasha, Burke Tower, and Art Willie, and myself, thank you for the good work you've done for the last five years as we tie this up, but also, again, when we subscribe and pledge to a campaign and fulfill 100% of it, that is an amazing gift to this congregation, and we thank you very much. Before we get to the, uh, the last piece, which is the, the nominations of the ministry groups and church council members for next year. I just want to give a quick update on church governance. So I don't know exact, but I believe maybe five years ago, um, we as a congregation decided we need to kind of take a look at 
um, our governance structure. For 170 some years, we had you know the ministry council where the facilitators of the uh, each of the ministries got together on a monthly basis and basically governed the church. Uh, there was a uh, initiative to uh, get a group of people to to take a look at is that the best way to. Um, govern the church, guide the church, help separate the operational um, work that's required to um, manage a church versus the ministerial kind of efforts. Um, so then two years after that, we, um, at this meeting, I believe there was a congregational vote to change then from the ministry council to the church council. Um, so you have separate members on the church council from the ministry groups. Again, let the ministry groups do their ministries, let the church council kind of uh, help guide and govern the church. We're gonna try that for 18 months, if I believe. We're still in our 18 month plus. So it's gonna take us a while. Uh, just a lot has happened, uh, not just COVID, but there's just been a lot of good, um, good stuff that the council had to uh, address over the last three or four years, and we really haven't been able to spend as much time on overall governance as we had hoped. Um, so uh, we're looking to extend this church council structure for um, the time being. Again, you'll um, you'll see who who's all been nominated and willing to to serve on the church council. Um, that all being said. Governing the church is uh, a, a challenge, especially in a, uh, a congregational church, because it's it's basically all up to us. It's not, um, there are no rules from anyone else. What we wanna do and, and who we wanna be is, is really up to ourselves. So um, look for all of your thoughts on how we can uh, best navigate kind of where we're at and where we wanna go. Um, Jen, Jen asked me last night, are you worried that people are gonna ask hard questions? And I said, no, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried people aren't gonna ask any questions. Um, so Maria, thank you <laughs> for one question. But really, you know, all uh, kidding aside, the, the church council is going to be uh, taking a day out and having a, an offsite meeting to discuss everything, church governance, the, the future, the finances. Again, Mike presented that uh, this next year we need to tap into our savings, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Know, that's just not sustainable for the long future. So uh, we have a lot to tackle. Um, and it's not just all about what the seven, nine, maybe 11 church council members think. It's about what all of you guys think. So between now and February 25th is when we're gonna have our offsite. Please, please talk to us, talk with us, share your thoughts as to um, what's working, what's not working, how can we um, sustain the church so that we can have a, a 272nd annual meeting uh, someday, right? It's just the, uh, maintain the future of, of this church. A couple areas of, of need. Again, this is, you may or may not know, and, and, and it may be evident, but not. Um, so our children's area and our confirmation area is, we're in strong need of, of support, help, time, volunteers to uh, uh, continue, continue those programs. Music, again, we, uh, we have a strong music program now, but we need to continue to, to maintain that and evolve that. So we're looking for assistance in the, the music ministry. So if there's anybody there with talents and uh, patience and energy, you know, we'd be looking to, uh, for more support in the music um, ministry area. And, and then finally, the, uh, the one thing that we, we all love the most sometimes seems to be a challenge in uh, getting, not necessarily people to volunteer, but getting people to coordinate is, is there a fellowship hour? The CB has stepped in to help 
uh, recruit, recruit folks, that, that kind of process is not sustainable. So we would like to get our, our whole fellowship um, ministry back up and uh, running again and, and on a regular basis. And that's all for you. It's not for anybody else other than ourselves. So you think it would be a simple thing, but sometimes that becomes a challenge of just getting that all, all coordinated. So again, thank you, CB, for what you've done up to now, but we still need a volunteer to help uh, coordinate that you know, going forward. Um, anyway, so that's some of the some of the needs, some of the concerns. These are all the the things that we're tackling as a as a, a church council, as a congregation. Um, so again, before we get into the, the nominations, is there any any questions? Yes, Anne. Can you go ahead? How is the best way to share our thoughts um, to, to the representative? Uh, I'm on one committee or on a board, mm -hmm. and um, I have a liaison. Just me. Is that yes? Is that the best way to communicate some concerns about not that, but the yeah. whole system? Yeah. yeah. At the moment, if you're on a, a ministry group, you. You'd share, I would think you'd share your concerns, thoughts with your liaison, your church council liaison. In your case, that would be me. Um, but if you're not on a ministry group, you just have a concern, you just share it with one of the church council members. And again, I, I introduce them at the beginning of the meeting, and in a second, you'll see who's going to be on the church council going forward this next year. But yeah, talk or down at um, lunch you know, today, or fellowship at any time. Cynthia. I would like to add to that as a church council member, and I've been trying to dialogue with people and I get feedback. This is so very important that my mind isn't gonna hold everything if you're just telling me it. So if you have real issues, concerns, please share it with someone. And then if you could jot down the ideas so that we can also have that in writing so we don't forget about it on that day. Anybody else? Okay, again, sharing starts with uh, fellowship down at Fellowship Hall for a potluck afterwards, but let's do nominations first, Cynthia. Okay, we just have a few things left. I'm gonna, we start with um, ministry group members. And it, I can read fast, but I wanna recognize you because you've served this. So first of all, I'd like to thank the nomination committee. If you're newer here, every year about sometime in November, December, we reach out to our membership and say, are you gonna continue with the ministry group you're on? Are you interested in switching to another group? Is there some place you'd like to serve? And if you knew and never served in anything, we ask you to step up and tell us. And I will also say that we'll be looking probably at our bylaws that are need some look at our uh, February meeting. And just so some of you know, there are term limits. Can you believe that? We'd actually kick people off of a committee because they've served sift here. So we need to explore that idea too because we certainly are not always following everything that's in our bylaws. So I want to thank people who have um, served on the nomination committee. Reverend Nancy worked with Sue Coghill and Kelly, Vanessa Frank and myself. And as, thank you Toby for pointing out, we didn't get you a full slate, but we add people all year long. So if you look at this list and say, hey, I got some time, I didn't think I had any time a couple months ago, but now I do just talk to somebody on the church council. So first, I'm gonna, I, I would just like people to wait, raise their hand and you look around so that new people and old people get an idea who some of these people are. So first is lifelong learning. Yeah, that, I can't see that up there. Lifelong learning, Erin Caprillion, Paul, Jim Paulson, Paula Viard, Joyce Frome, Cheryl Hintz, one opening. Thank you. Benevolence, Peggy Conniff, Ann Marshall, Joan Oman, 
Becky Gratz, Ginny Shear, one opening. Building in grounds, Linnell Arndt, Sarah Dempsey, Tom Hulquist, John Oman, two openings. Children and Youth Ministry, Talon Booz, Jen Booz, Bethany Rank, Ben Cook, two openings. Church Growth and Engagement, Keegan Burnett, Kaylin Wiesenberg, Maria Boucher, three openings. Finance, Art Willie, Jim Caprillion, Pat Nichols, Zach Rogers, two openings. And if you notice on your sheet, in, we have generosity listed under there. We are going to continue our generosity awareness program this year, and we are looking for a couple people to work on that. Personnel, Pat Blade, Larry Johnson, Gina Lapold ruby Sarah Muir, Jen Norton, and Dennis Cavanaugh. Worship, Darcy Duffy, Bridget Thorpe Cavanaugh, Delora Boyd, and Corinne Salada. Two openings. Music, Spencer Hadel, and Barbara Ziblett. Four openings. And social justice, lastly, Jody Harrell, Ron Harrell, David Jones, Jackie Miller, Jean Pat, Amy Smith, Ann Wiesenberg, Terry Wiesenberg, and Val Williams. Where's my moderator? So. All right, at this point, I'd ask for a uh, motion to approve these nominations. Jeff Palman Becker, and a second. Say the name again. Any discussion and or any additions to this list? All right, all in favor? Any opposed? One, thank you. Motion and I want to thank all of you. We had a lot of people continuing their service, and there were just some who had to step back. And so thank all of you who have served on our ministry groups last year. So, next slide. Our proposed church council is, list, uh, you see their beautiful faces up there. I want to recognize that we had two people step down this year, and both of them had served two years, Paula Allen and Dave Roman, and I'd like to thank you for your service. You did, uh, basically they did some tough time through COVID there, didn't you? So the proposed church calendar for membership at large is Kathy Willey, Jeff Holman Becker, Sarah Yashup, Sue Coghill, and we're so fortunate to add a new member this year, Jim Hoffman. So thanks to all of you for stepping up and willingness to serve. Look for a motion to approve the uh, members at large at church council. Karen Bowen, move, second. Joyce Frohn. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Carried. So we have the last group, which would be the officers. And your moderator, Toby, he has been wonderful to work with. I absolutely love his organizational skills. <laughs> Let's give him a big hand. I don't know why, but I'm continuing, so I'm up there again. And Vanessa has kept the church minutes and books and orders for us as our church clerk. And I have to have a special shout out, shout out to Mike Duffy. I've been on past 30 some years back and forth on and uh, Some of you don't know, but we've had some issues with finances, not just the, it's not the dollars, it was accounting thing and a technology things and people retiring from the office. So it hasn't been an easy year for getting our books straight, but I'm told we're in good shape now, and he worked very hard. So I want to thank Mike. Could you give him a hand? All right, I look for a motion to approve the uh, church council officers. Jean, and a second. Anne. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? All right. 
motion carried. So again, before we uh, close this meeting, I just wanted to open it up again. Are there any questions, concerns that you want to raise as a congregation? Kathy. I do some work with um, the churches with the Wisconsin Conference, and one of the things that's become very apparent to me is that there's a lot of books being written right now on the post-pandemic church. And, um, and I've been trying to read some of those and bringing the, the information to the council. But this really is an opportunity for the church to look at itself and to say, how do we want to be going forward knowing that uh, we can't go back? It's not going to be possible to go back to the way we were. So um, to have a, an open spirit of uh, change and innovation and um, possibilities, uh, I think would, uh, is, would serve this congregation well. Uh, Many churches are closing at this point following the pandemic um, of all denominations and all religions, um, and we're still here. And I think we have something to offer to the community, to the world, and of course to each other. So I just would encourage a spirit of, of openness to the possibilities of changes that will be made as we go forward. Thanks. Okay, very good. So uh, after this meeting, you are all invited down to Fellowship Hall for a potluck, but let's uh, have a closing prayer. Reverend Nancy. One of my favorite lines from the Apostle Paul is he talks about um, people we don't want to be, and those people are, are their God is their belly. Um, I've been sitting back here smelling lunch, and um, I'm afraid I'm in the, the um, bad people category. My stomach is really happy that we have concluded our <laughs> uh, meeting, and we have much food to offer. We have much community to share with one another. Uh, we have indeed gifts to give to the world and to one another, and so I hope you do stay for lunch. Share with your council members, um, the officers, any of the concerns you have, the dreams you have, share them with me. But let us join one another for a feast of love and good food. And let us pray. Gracious God, you do call us forward, always forward. Learning from the past, giving thanks for all those who have gone before, learning the new ways that you bring into our lives. We do give thanks. Thanks that you are our God, that you show us the way of peace. We are aware of all so many of the needs of this world. So many of your people are brokenhearted. So many of your people live with violence. And you call us to care for one another, to care for this earth, to radiate with your love for all of creation. Be with us. Nudge us. Call us forward. Help us to be the people you invite us to be so that we might indeed do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, with that, I'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>